Hello everyone and welcome back to round 7 of the 2020 Candidates Tournament. It's a former World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana versus Van Gaal. And uh, before we check out the game, uh, here's a nice photo uh, of the two of them. There you have it. Fabi with his uh, uh, bottle of water and Van Gaal again with, with his banana. Probably not gonna just uh, eat it up right away, maybe maybe in the fourth or maybe fifth hour of gameplay to, to get that extra boost needed for, for uh, to play an endgame against Fabi. Uh, but we'll see, it's it's hard to say. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Fabi with the white pieces opens with e4 and as uh, Van Gaal already uh, said in his previous games with the black pieces against e4, he uh, prepared the Petro for this candidates tournament. We have knight to f3, sorry about that. Uh, and knight to f6. The Petrov is on the board and knight captures an e5, uh, going for the classical variation. d6, knight to f3, and now knight captures an e4. Uh, and here Fabi goes for the Nimsovic attack with the knight to c3, uh, which is my favorite line against uh, against the, the, the Petrov, so I'm very happy about this. Knight captures an c3, d captures, and bishop to e7. And if there are some uh, beginners watching, I always like to mention that sometimes if black goes bishop to g4, you can immediately punish this with h3. And after the bishop moves, just go for a nice double attack here, uh, which will win you the bishop pair, because you now have to capture, capture, and now, well, obviously block the b7 square, and now you have an open game with two bishops, so you will have a, you will have a great time. Uh, but okay, bishop to e7 by Van Gaal, and now bishop to e3. Uh, we have castles by Van Gaal and now queen to d2, preparing to castle queen side, knight to d7 and now <clears throat> uh, a queen side castle, sorry about that. Uh, knight to f6 and bishop to d3, now developing the bishops to d3 and d3 uh, like Paul Morphy uh, and now c5. c5 creating this uh, weak, d so well for the moment weak d6, d6 pawn, uh, but uh, he's preparing queen to a5 to go after the queen side here. We have rook h to e1 and now bishop to e6, uh, just going after the pawn here, king to b1 defending and now queen to a5. And Fabi reached this position a couple of times, for example he had a uh, uh, last year against Duda in the Grand Chess Tour in uh, in the Paris Rapid Tournament, uh, where he played a3 uh, to nullify this threat, and uh, he defeated Duda in this game. Uh, but he also had this position uh, in, in his game against Magnus Carlsen, uh, only Carlsen had the, the white pieces, of course, uh, and in that, <clears throat> uh, sorry about that, and in that game, a c4 was played by Carlsen, and this is uh, what Fabi goes for here, he follows the game uh, Carlsen against Corona from the 2018 World Chess Championship match. Uh, we have queen capture on d2, and now uh, bishop capture on d2 was played in every game that reached this position, including the one Carlsen versus Caruana from the World Chess Championship match in 2018. Uh, but here Fabi goes for knight capture on d2, and this is uh, the uh, the deviation that Fabi prepared, uh, probably to to try and tr uh, throw uh, Van Gaal uh, off guard. <clears throat> uh, so it is as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how the game continues. Uh, how, of course, uh, now that uh, the queens are off the board, now d6 could become a, could become a weakness. So rook a to d8, uh, he wants to prepare and bust open the position with d5. Uh, we have knight to f3, uh, sorry, not knight to f3, f3 uh, by Fabi and now b6, strengthening the c5 pawn so you can push d5. Uh, and now g4, as f3 prepared it, you want to go g4 and g5. Uh, we have d5 striking in the center and now g5 saying that you don't have time to continue pushing because of captures and captures. So knight has to move whether to e8, d7 or h5. Uh, e8 and h5 is is great. Uh, at d7 not so much because you block off your rook's influence along the d file. So knight to h5 but it's all in preparation for pushing f5 and you are expecting capture some passant so the knight will return right back. So that's uh, it's the knight will not stay on the edge of the board for long. Uh, we have c captures on d5 now, bishop captures and now knight to e4. And here, uh, by blocking the bishop's attack on the f3 pawn, uh, this is where uh, Wang Hao uh, uh, goes f5. And of course now if you move the knight, uh, for example, you move the knight, you just capture, capture and pick off the f3 pawn. So of course Fabi not uh, eager to allow that. G captures on f6, en passant. Knight captures on f6 and now bishop to g5, saying now uh, you, you cannot trade because bishop captures here will come with an attack on both of your rooks. So king to f7, 
Now the king also helps out with the defense of the bishop and only now knight to g3. Asking Wang Hao, uh, are you interested uh, in a nice juicy f3 pawn here? And indeed, uh, if the pawn is captured, uh, it's, uh, well, it's a very interesting game. For example, if bishop captures, you get knight to f5 now, offering <laughs> rook for rook captures on e7. And now you have to block with rook f to e8 uh, and then we just uh, run... Uh, pretty much trade everything captures 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 uh, but if you go for bishop captures on d1 then it's then it's really bad for black captures you have to go here captures with check you have to go here then you capture here and then you have uh, insane pressure against the h7 square and uh, could be could be uh, a lot of problems for black so Van Kao not interested in capturing the pawn, uh, well, at least not yet, he goes for c4 instead. Uh, he frees the c5 square for his bishop, uh, so the knight on f5 will not be uh, such, a pr uh, such a problem. Bishop back to f1 and now b5, strengthening his uh, pawn here. With a4, Fab immediately goes after the b5 pawn and a6. A captures on b5, a captures and now knight to f5. Uh, but now, uh, of course, the c5 square has been freed for the bishop. And here Van Hao goes bishop to c5. If you're wondering about bishop to b4 with an attack on the rook, it does seem better, but it's, it's pretty much the same. And here's why. Uh, because now uh, you either go uh, rook to e5 uh, or you block with bishop to d2. But uh, whichever you do after captures on f3, uh, we pretty much uh, go into a capture fest and it uh, runs into an equal endgame. For example, captures, captures. Now you capture here, attacking the bishop. And now after rook d1 check, king a2, you capture on f1. White captures here and it's equal material. Uh, the, the game continues. And on the other hand, after bishop to b4, if you block with bishop to d2, then it's again bishop captures here. You pick off the bishop now. Uh, bishop captures on d1 and now uh, knight to d6 with check. Checking uh, the king, hoping to pick off the bishop uh, with rook captures here. But now rook captures here and now bishop captures. Uh, we have bishop, uh, rook to d8 now, uh, attacking the bishop. And after rook captures here, it seems like white is uh, up a piece, but knight to e4. You cannot move the bishop because of rook captures rook. So it seems uh, Van Hao could have uh, won a pawn here, but not really, because here Fabi would have bishop captures on c4 with check, and now you unpin with rook to f1 check, king e6, and now you bring the bishop back, again having this position where uh, Fabi has a bishop against a knight, and it's uh, three pawns each. Uh, although Van Hao with a much more active king, so black, black should be preferred here. Uh, but uh, after knight to f5, uh, like I said, Van Hao went for bishop to c5 instead. And now Fabi goes for rook to e5. Now, if this bishop moves, you can uh, just win the bishop on c5. Uh, but it's not a problem as the rook on d1 is now undefended. So bishop captures on f3. Now, again, we go into a capture fest with rook captures on d8, rook captures on d8, and now rook captures on c5. Temporarily winning a piece, but rook to d1 with check, king to a2, and now rook captures on f1. Uh, rook captures on b5, and now uh, we get this position. The material is equal, uh, but uh, Fabi's position is somewhat shakier. We have the immediate c3. The immediate c3 saying you either double your pawns and then those are just super weak pawns or you play b3 and then my rook f2 is incredibly strong attacking both h2 and c2 pawns uh, and after you defend at least this pawn with knight e3 i bring another attacker bishop e4 and now uh, if king b1 if you persist on defending then i capture this guy here and now uh, i'm definitely better as i'm up a pawn and you've done nothing so far with your moves so after this uh, c3 move, we have bishop captures on f6, king captures on f6, and now knight to e3, uh, preemptively defending the c2 pawn. Rook to f2, attacking the pawn here, and now, while you could go for uh, a lot of moves here, b4 seems like, a, seems like a good try for Fabi, creating a passed b pawn, and now it's just a matter of moving your rook and continuing to push your pawn, but that's easier said than done. Uh, because, uh, well, black has to be careful not to move the rook uh, due to rook to f5 check, winning the bishop. So you kind of have to play g6 and then after, let's say, king b3, uh, now you pick off the pawn here and now you play, let's say, rook b8 and start pushing your pawn. But now it's black also who has a passed pawn and black is still up a pawn. So if you don't have a sure, sure, sure thing here, you don't want to go into an endgame being down a pawn. So instead, Fabi first goes rook to f5 with check, king to e6, and now 
king to a3. Uh, again, if you if you try and rush with uh, this b4 move, we run into a, si a similar variation after g6. And now, uh, again, what do you do here? Rook to f4, uh, keeping an eye on the bishop so the rook cannot move. But now you allow the advancement of the g pawn, g5, rook f5, you're going to go g4. And you've already allowed this pawn to come all the way here. If uh, you continue pushing the pawn, rook e2 just wins the game. Uh, as you're attacking the defender of the rook here, and there is not much to be done here. So it's a, it's a very tricky position. So Fabi instead went for king to a3, he gets away uh, the king away from the second rank, and now basically says, uh, okay, now you have to capture on b2, which Wang Hao does. We have king captures now, uh, and now uh, we have h5 by Wang Hao. Uh, there, is a, there is a move that kind of allows uh, Wang Hao to, to maybe uh, go, for, uh, go for something more, uh, but uh, it's uh, it, it shouldn't yield more than a draw. But if you're if you're interested, feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, idea. Uh, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do that, congratulations on spotting how to win a pawn. And for those of you who just uh, want to enjoy the show, it's rook captures on c2. Uh, point is that if knight captures, uh, you just play king captures and you have a, a very good winning chances here because your king and bishop are very active and his king is all the way on b2. You do have a lot of time to start pushing those pawns. Uh, and uh, after rook captures on c2, you of course don't capture with the knight, you capture with the king, then bishop e4 check, king to d2, and bishop captures on f5 now it's a bit of a different uh, idea as the king white king is much more active uh, but uh, uh, again with perfect play it shouldn't yield more than a draw uh, but that's uh, why you are in the candidates tournament you should uh, you should exploit all of the options and uh, and uh, ho hope for the best because only only black can be better here uh, but Wang Hao first uh, uh, played h5 he wants to first advance his pawns uh, as, as far as he can maybe even all the way to h3 and then go for this uh, rook captures on c2 idea so his pawns will be more far advanced uh, but now Fabi blocks it with h4 uh, and here now uh, that Wang Hao uh, pretty much uh, depleted all of the resources now he goes for rook captures uh, uh, on c2. Uh, Fabi goes king captures on c2, we have bishop to e4 with check, king to d2, and now bishop captures on f5. Uh, of course, you cannot trade, it, it would be a losing end game for white, two, two pawns against one, easy game. Uh, so after bishop captures on f5, we have king to e2, uh, and now uh, we have uh, uh, king to e5. Uh, we have king to f3 by Fabi, and after bishop to d3, it was in this position that uh, Fabiano Corwana and Van Kao agreed to a draw, uh, because it in fact is a draw with perfect play, uh, but uh, uh, and Van Kao is not interested in trying, even trying to uh, to do something about this. Maybe if it, if it was a, a knight for Van Kao and the bishop for Fabi, then maybe he would try to do some uh, sneaky sneaky moves with the knight. But uh, this way, uh, it's it's fairly e easier to to draw. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, really, uh, it was a. Uh, it was. It seems like it was a pretty safe game for Van Kao, uh, especially with the black piece against Fabi. Uh, and it was very brave of him to go into the variation that Fabi played against Magnus in the World Chess Championship match. Uh, but also, uh, it's uh, interesting that that Fabi has a, an improvement on that game for White, uh, so which he which he showed in this game. And uh, there was some poison uh, to the position, but Wang Hao just uh, uh, outmaneuvered uh, all, all of the ideas. And uh, here, for those of you who are interested, I will now show the standings after round 7. So for those of you who are still not interested in the standings, uh, you know, don't watch. Uh, close your eyes for a couple of seconds. Uh, and for those of you who are interested, here it is. Uh, because Maxim Varshel Lagrave defeated Yanni Pomnishi, uh, the two of them now share first place with four and a half. Uh, and then uh, a lot of people with three and a half. Fabiano Corwana, Anish Giri, Van Hal, Alexander Grishuk, and with two and a half, Dingler and Kirill Alexenko. And these are the standings after seven rounds. So we are done with first half of the tournament. Now we go into the second half, where all of the players will again face uh, each other with colors reversed. Uh, so that's going to be also very interesting and, uh, you know, uh, those who lost to some players will have their chance to get, to, to get their revenge. And it's not the end of the world for Ding and Alexenko. Uh, for, for example, if if they win just one game, they're already on three and a half and 
you know it, it's uh, the ball starts rolling and it's it it wouldn't be unheard of uh for Ding to maybe win two in a row but with uh, with the way he's playing so far it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, he he's not getting a lot of chances uh, and he should win some games because if he continues in this fashion uh or you know he he's just going to ruin the tournament for Fabi by by defeating him uh but yeah uh, like I said, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Hugh Babic, uh, Kerem Kilic, uh, Erika Fong, uh, Anders Norell, and uh, Jans, uh, Jens Stefan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2020 uh, until it finishes. So uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.